I am fed up, and I know you are too. I think that is rude. America, today is the rude awakening. You mean he pooped? Now your neighbor's gonna know that that was you. Have you gone through a supermarket express lane with more than 10 items? Who says they've never gossiped? This is your judgment day. Are you rude? Take our test and find out. I don't believe y'all. Next. I know y'all are feeling it too, America. People are so rude these days, aren't they? I mean, just obnoxious, obnoxious coworkers. Everybody has some. Aggressive drivers. Yes, yes. Where's everybody going? Sales clerks who, who, who first ignore you and then act like they own the store. Yeah. yeah, snarky emailers. I mean, aren't you fed up with people's overall crankiness? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. My biggest pet peeve is when I have my blinker on for a great parking spot and someone comes from the opposite side and steals it. Happens all the time. I have a friend who uh, chooses to share all her important information, her engagement, her wedding, the birth of her child, all via email, and I just wish she would call me. My phone number hasn't changed in 15 years, and the group emails I just find incredibly rude. I absolutely despise when people do not wash their hands after using the restroom. I saw one of my coworkers doing it the other day. It absolutely made me cringe. I was having lunch in the lunchroom, and uh, one of the guys started clipping his nails, and nails went like flying all over the place and landed in your food, and it was just like the grossest thing I've ever seen. When people throw their cigarettes out of their windows and on the ground, I think it's rude and it's disgusting and very inappropriate. I don't like when people talk on their cell phone so loud that you can hear the conversation and what they did the night before. I hate it whenever I go to church and I hear cell phones ringing. One of my biggest pet peeves is when I see people texting while trying to drive. It drives me bananas when my husband is always on his Blackberry and not talking or paying attention to anything else going on. When you're in somebody else's presence and they decide to text, it drives me insane. I was recently out on a date where a guy answered his phone every time it rang. If I walked out of the restaurant, I don't think he even would have noticed. <laughs> wrong guy, wrong guy for you. So we need to learn to be more civil to each other. I talked to Jerry Seinfeld about that for O Magazine a while back. He is really, it was so interesting when I asked him what was his big pet peeve, he said civility. Nobody's ever said that as an answer in all the years I've asked that question. He says the top three rudest behaviors for him were cutting people off on the road, the BlackBerry or cell phone abuse, and interrupting while someone is talking. I like that list. Mine are people who are chewing gum with their mouth open. I don't want to see it. <laughs> Same thing about BlackBerries. And I also can't stand it when people are rude to service workers because I think you show who you are by how you treat people who are serving you. OK, so people ask me all the time. <laughs> you really do. And I also think this is very rude, so don't do it to me anymore. Uh, people say this to me all the time. Do you remember meeting me? <laughs> OK, and then I try to be civil about it, like, oh, hi, how are you? And then they go, what's my name? <laughs> See, I think that is rude, right? <laughs> because it's enough that I'm trying to be civil and, oh, hi, how are you? And it's usually one of those eight years ago, you saw me in an elevator kind of things. And, <laughs> Is that you? Oh, great. <laughs> Change your hair. OK, where's Nancy Dorsey? Nancy, right I hear you have a, a pretty awful cell phone story. Yes, I was at my gynecologist's office, and I put my legs in the stirrups. Oh, no. Totally exposed, and his cell phone went off, and he answered it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It was not an urgent conversation, and it went on for seven to 10 minutes. <laughs> While he's down there with a spatula? <laughs> no, you know that thing. What do they call that thing? <laughs> the what? Spectalum. <laughs> OK. <laughs> While he's down there with that thing, <laughs> burr, 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 burr. That is disgusting. And so what are you doing the whole time? I well, there's not much stop. you can do. And yeah. <laughs> Poor bedside manner, rude, inappropriate. What, did you say that to him? Did you say that? Or did I you just... didn't say anything. I just was yeah. in shock. Yeah, yeah. 
and then you got up and put your clothes on. <laughs> and I what? never went back. You never went back. I never went back. Okay, good. Very good. That's bad. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, Stephanie in our audience says that she sees rudeness run amok every day working at airport security. You all can imagine, <laughs> uh, for the TSA. Stephanie, I, you have a few doozies, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Stand up, share with us. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we see about two million people. They fly every day. And yes. whereas most people are pretty cordial and you know they're just trying to get through and get yeah. their flights. Everybody's just trying to get to There's they still those people who are, are just rude. Special people, we yeah. become special. Yeah. <laughs> So there, just some of the things that we deal with. Um, I personally had a passenger to um, throw a cologne bottle at my head, and he threw it at me so hard that if I hadn't ducked, it would have hit me. This is and after you asked him to let. This is after I asked, told him that he couldn't um, take the bottle of cologne onto the plane because it was after the liquids restriction. So yeah. there was a real threat, and we had started, you know, telling people that hey, you can't take this on. You could check it. You know the rules. And he was just so incensed that it, it surprised threw it at me, that he threw it at me. And then there are other instances where people will come through and they're angry or they're upset for whatever reasons, but they, they tend to take that out on those frontline people. So they'll say really mean things. They'll say things like, you know, oh, you're, you're such an idiot and these rules are ridiculous. As if we wake up in the morning and say, oh, what rules are we going to enforce today? And make them up. I mean, you know, they just don't understand. Yeah, and I'd heard that you know, you've you noticed that cell phones add to all of this. Oh, also. absolutely, absolutely. It's, that's, I think, the most recurrent. When it comes down to you're there and you're waiting to get a person's ID and, you know, check their tickets and they walk up to you and they're on the phone and they're ignoring you like you don't even exist. Yeah. Like you're not there, you're invisible and you, you sort of don't want to be rude. You don't want to interrupt their conversation, but they're also being inconsiderate for the other passengers that are in line because they're not hearing the divestiture yeah. speeches or anything like that. And they're just sort of in their own world. That's so right. Just like Nobody's present anymore. for anything anymore. Absolutely. Everybody's on to the next moment instead of living this one. Thank you, Stephanie. You're welcome. Okay, ask yourself this. Are you rude? Are you? Okay. I would say no to, to that, too. I don't think I'm a rude person. 80% of Americans believe that rudeness is a serious national problem. And we all talk about it amongst ourselves, do we not? Say how rude everybody else is. But here's what's so interesting. 99% of the same people say that they themselves are not rude. So 80% of the people say <laughs> that it's really rude. People, it's very bad, the situation here. But 99% of, of us say, but we're not one of those people. So what we're going to do right now is take a quiz. Those of you at home, you're going to do this too. This could be an eye opener for you. Everybody has this under your seat. Everybody in our audience has a voting device from um, a company called Paget Communications. And you can play along at home too, just by answering yes or no. So here we go. I don't have one. <laughs> I don't have one. OK. So first question, are you chronically late? Press one for yes, press two for no. Are you chronically late? Yes or no? There's a result. 27%, 73%. My answer would be not chronically. <laughs> My answer would be sort of, kind of. My answer would be sort of, kind of, like I was like 10 minutes late today getting down here. I had some issues. But there should be no excuse because being late means that you are, I, I will tell you this late story that really helped me. Uh, Bob Green, who is like a brother to me, and I used to work out with him a lot. And when I first started working out with him, um, I, was, I was late. I was chronically late. And I was uh, late one day, and he said, if this ever happens again, I will never work out with you because my time means as much to me as yours means to you. So you either get here on time or find yourself another trainer. And uh, I went, OK. <laughs> really true. OK, more of our How Rude Are You quiz. We'll be right back. This is fun. You'll see. Black fade to black. Ready to dissolve to Q. So today we're talking about what I know you talk about with your friends, how rude everybody's gotten, and asking the question, are you rude? 80% of people who were polled in this country say that that is a national problem, 
of all of us being so rude to each other, 99% say that they're not rude. So we're taking an eye-opening quiz. Two sisters up here, you two sisters, who answered yes to being chronically late. Yes. Okay. I have four children to get ready, though, before I get out of the house. Okay, so I, that... I have a cat. I don't have a reason. <laughs> I don't have a reason. <laughs> and why are you always late? Miss Cat Lady, we understand the four <laughs> children. I don't leave enough time. I like bed. I don't want to, I'm a teacher, so I feel like I can just go 20 minutes before I stay late. I'm a late person. That's why, not a morning person. Okay. <laughs> but do you, see, do, you, do you see where it's, where it's rude to Absolutely. be Absolutely. Um, my husband drives him nuts. Okay. It's rude. It's rude. I'm <laughs> say that. It's rude. It'll be my goal for this year. Okay. But it's still rude. <laughs> okay. Everybody in our audience, thank you. Thank you, sisters. Everybody in our audience has a voting device from Paget Communications. You can play along at home just by answering yes or no. I got one during the commercial break. Our second question, have you ever typed an email while talking on the phone? Type one for yes, two for no. Rude. Okay, who, who's typed an email while talking on the phone since 70%? Yeah. Even you, Miss Security Lady? <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie, okay, time management. So who's typed an email while talking on the phone? Okay, right there on that road. Get the gentleman in blue right there. Stand up, sir. I have typed, uh, I type emails all the time when on the phone because these days there's so much to do, so you got to take advantage of every second you have. Okay, so you think that's multitasking? I do. Okay. Anybody else typed an email? There's 70% of this audience. I, I would be one of them, too. Anybody else? Yes. Hi. Um, I have, and I feel really guilty, especially when it's my mom. I try to be really quiet when I'm typing. <laughs> so I should pay attention to my mom. And has anybody ever said to you while you were on the phone, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then do you lie about it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, okay, all right. That's rude. <laughs> That's rude, but you know, I've done it, and 70% of this audience has done it, and I'm sure many of you at home have done it, and I never thought of it as rude, but apparently it is. Okay, thank you very much. Have you ever interrupted a face-to-face -face conversation to take a non-urgent cell phone call? Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't believe y'all. <laughs> okay, who said no? Who said no? Hi, lady in blue. I like to just click the little side button and put it back in my pocket. Okay. How many people have who said yes? Said yes. Yes, 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 yes. Pink, lady in pink. Hi. Non-urgent. You're in the middle of a phone call. Well, it kind of depends on who it is. <laughs> because if it's like... Who oh, does it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Well, if it's my mom calling and I'm like talking to my boyfriend, then I'm gonna be like, hey, sorry, my mom's calling me. Okay. So, okay, I, I think that's a good that. I thought it was gonna be the other way around. Like if I'm talking, <laughs> I thought you were gonna say, if I'm like talking mom's to my boyfriend first. and my mom's mom calls. <laughs> okay, well that is considered rude if you've ever interrupted a face-to-face -face conversation to take a non-urgent cell phone call. So, so far, everybody's a little rude. Have you gone through, listen to this one, this is good. Have you gone through a supermarket 10 item express lane with more than 10 items? Yes or no? Yes or no? Have you ever in your lifetime? <laughs> this is your judgment day. Fifty-three percent of the people say no. Okay, I gotta, I gotta trust you on that because there's no reason to lie. But then who are all those people going through <laughs> the express line? Yeah, you have, you have, with more than ten items. I would say I've had probably about fifteen to twenty items that my mom Ooh. works at a grocery store, so I know what she feels like. <laughs> wow. I just okay. Go ahead. Anybody else? Hello, back there. <laughs> Hi. You had how many items going through a ten item? <laughs> It was like maybe 20, but I, I, I think it is all the little items, they go together. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, they count as one. Like a couple cans of soup, I'm like, well, they're all together, so that's like five. 
And then like fruit and said that's separate. Okay, and you don't feel the least bit bad about yourself? No, actually she told me, she's like, you know, it's only 15 hours. I was like, well, I'm in a rush now, I'll go together, so it's okay. Okay, all right. Okay, that's considered rude though, you know. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Have you let your dog relieve him or herself on your neighbor's lawn, yes or no? 30% yes, 64% say no. Where are all those yellow stains coming from? <laughs> okay, who's let their dog pee on somebody else's grass? Yes? Yes? You have? Last night. Last night. It was about 10 o'clock, and I was taking my dog for a walk, and I went around the block, and it was, it was dark, and I didn't think he would go, but he did on the neighbor's lawn. And I should have gone home and gotten a bag, but I, I didn't. I was tired. You mean he pooped? <laughs> I know, and I never usually do that, but I was tired, and I... I... <laughs> oh, now that poop is another story. I know. Yeah. Oh, then and I... Now your neighbor's going to know that that was you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I... That is rude, though. That I is, know. you know, that I is... Know. That, I that know. That is I know, rude. and now yeah. I have to apologize yeah. on air. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> You can go back today and get a plastic bag and pick that up. Because it's really, this is my thing. I think it's really okay days later to pick up your own dog's poop. You just can't do it for another dog. Right. So you know that's your dog's poop. You oh, know I know. Pooped. Yes. Go get a bag. We'll find it. No, okay, good. Because right. that is really rude. And, and it's really rude for people who don't pick up their dog's poop. It's really, that is so bad. Have you ever stolen someone's parking spot? By stolen, I mean, just at the beginning of the show, a woman was saying, they're tr you know that they're there, they were there first, and you could make the turn. Have you ever done that? Taken a parking spot that you know was someone else's? This is good. Well, I think, yeah, because this is where we draw the line, people. <laughs> Who here has taken the parking spot that you knew someone else has? This is okay, 12%. You have? Mm-hmm. There with your I friend when the checkout line with the 20 <laughs> items. Yes. I just pretend like, they're, like I didn't see them. So if I didn't see them, it never it's happened. Part of rush. <laughs> it's a part of rush. Karma doesn't the work other that way. way. Karma doesn't work that way. So you admit it. Yes, I admit it. Here's a question, everybody. Let's see what this poll says. Have you ever gossiped? Have you ever gossiped? <laughs> okay, where is the 3%? <laughs> where are the 3%? Who, is, who's, who says they've never gossiped? Who? Where? I'm looking for a hand. Where is one? Men? Men. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yes? Uh, I just think it's rude to talk about somebody behind their back. So, so it's you like, have never gossiped? Oh, just, I just, I like to be more honest. So it's like, even if I have something like mean to say, I'd rather say it to your face than behind your back. You would. Okay. The, the gentleman in, okay, anybody else? Never gossip. Or would you recommend, you would, I need at least, what, three people? <laughs> yeah. Where, where's the other person? We can't find another person who's never gossiped. In your lifetime, you've never gossiped. I have, but it's my mother. She made a mistake. <laughs> she pushed two instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense, that makes sense, okay. Last question, have you ever taken someone else's food or drink from the office refrigerator? 86% said no. Okay. Where are the four, who has stolen other people's food? <laughs> Hello, what, who did you take? Well, my friend used to stock up the fridge at work all the time, so I used to take her stuff. But I think those people are lying. I know they stole some stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So you It's got to be more than 14%. That's 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 a lot actually. 14%. See, this I'm is sorry, the thing about, Margaret. No, 
this is the thing. Because this is the thing about stealing people's food. Somebody went through the trouble to pack their lunch. They were at home. They put in the little Tupperware dish. They come in with the little brown bag. They put it in the refrigerator, the little thing. And then you, who didn't do any of that, <laughs> comes in and takes their stuff. Just the sweet stuff. Just the sweet stuff. OK, but you can see why that would be rude, right? That's rude. So we were inspired to do this. Fascinating, though, huh? Yeah, for those of us who are telling the truth. Uh, we were inspired to do this show after reading a wonderful little book called Choosing Civility, The 25 Rules of Considerate Conduct. And I'm going to talk to the author when we come back. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Shannon. I've raised three children, and I work as a clerk in a gas station. I used to be a rude customer. I would talk on the cell phone while someone was trying to help me. I don't do that anymore because now I'm on the other side of the counter. Some customers that come in have zero manners and they can be so rude. I've named some of our customers the tossers. What they do is instead of handing me their cash, they toss it at me. I've had people toss it so hard it's actually flown off my side of the counter. Then we have the messers. They come, they get what they want, they leave their mess, and then I have to clean it up. I wonder if they do that at home. The rudest thing I've ever seen is a woman whose credit card was declined. She called me every name under the sun because it would not go through. I ended up having to flag down a police officer to have her escorted out. Sometimes I feel like a human punching bag because customers take things out on me that are not my fault. I think people are rude when they're having a bad day and they don't expect to ever have to see you again, so they say what they want. It hurts to be called a name or to be ignored. Thank you, Shannon, for giving us a view from the other side of the counter. We got a wake-up call for America. The quality of, of our lives and the quality of our relationships can improve if we all choose to be more considerate, more courteous and polite. The author of this wonderful little book I was telling you about, Choosing Civility, The 25 Rules of Considerate Conduct, is Dr. P.M. Forney of Johns Hopkins University. He's been on a 10-year mission now to promote gracious behavior. So why did you write this book? Because you were fed up with people being so rude. Because I was convinced at a certain point of my life that the quality of our lives depends upon the quality of our relationships. Mm -hmm. But the quality of our relationships depends upon our relational skills. Mm -hmm. And civility, good manners, and politeness are time-proven, very effective codes of relational skills. Yeah. Uh, the quality of our lives is about treating each other uh, well in, yeah. every, in every situation. We are all the trustees of one another's happiness and well-being in life. Yeah. And so... Uh, but we don't realize that when you're going that through that airport security that no. you're a trustee of the happiness of no, someone else. No, and one reason is that we are stressed, we are fatigued, and we are in an anonymous environment. Stress mm -hmm. and uh, anonymity are two very, very common forms. Uh, Stress cause, and anonymity. Anonymity causes of, uh, of rudeness, and, we, and especially when they are together, like yeah. in traffic. It's what the young lady was just saying, too. People think they're never going to see me again, so That's they can right. talk to me any way they want to. We don't have an incentive, because uh, we, we are, do not belong to the same lives, uh -huh. so to speak. There's a wonderful quote. Where's that quote, guys, that we were talking about last night? Dr. Forney, uh, this is a quote I love so much. We never touch people so lightly that we do not leave a trace. Yes, that is a, a quote uh, that I've used in the book from Peggy Tabor Millian, as a yes. matter of fact. I yes. love that. Don't you all love that? We never touch people so lightly that we do not leave a trace. And I think people forget that. People forget that. People forget that uh, uh, the pr there is a wonderful principle, the principle of respect for persons. Yes. Which is the principle upon which all ethical systems have been based uh, from the beginning of, of humanity, mm -hmm. uh, since certainly the last 2,000 years upon which all ethical systems have been based, which says that we ought to treat others as ends in themselves rather than as means for the satisfaction of our, of our own immediate mm -hmm. needs and desires. Mm -hmm. How is it bad for our health, though? You talk a lot about that in choosing civility. Well... That it's really making us sick, that when you're out there being... When you took that woman's parking spot... 
Yeah, that it makes us a little sicker, because it's really sort of like collective karma, isn't it? Yes, it is collective karma. Because uh, what you put are... out is always coming back. That's and, right. And it's not like somebody's going to now take your parking space later. It's the energy of that that's going to come back That's to you. right. Yes. There are the bad hormones and neurotransmitters. I'm not a, a physician, but any doctor will say that we are, when we are involved in a rude encounter, mm -hmm. uh, there are hormones uh, like catecholamines, for instance, cortisol, yeah. that are cascading into our system, and they are making our uh, immune system weaker. Yes. They are uh, weakening uh, our cardiovascular system. Bottom line is it's making you sicker. It's making you sick. If you, are, if you have a boss that you perceive to be unfair, you're much more likely to have cardiovascular disease. Really? Yes. Hello. <laughs> okay, coming up, she is so embarrassed by her sister's restaurant behavior that she turned her sister into us. You're gonna see how rude she is when we come back. Excellent. And uh, stay track, stay track. And it's all four, two, so we're talking about Dr. Forney's book, Choosing Civility, the 25 Rules of Considerate Conduct, which uh, most of America seems to have forgotten. Here's an eye opener. Your rude behavior is doing exactly what Dr. Forney just said, affecting the quality of your life. Dr. Forney says that if you're more considerate and you start to just be a little more courteous, that you will also be calmer. You can see how that would work, right? You, your calmness would make you healthier and happier. So while working on this show, we found that waiters really wish America knew proper restaurant etiquette. While you watch this next tape, ask yourself, have you ever done any of this? When you're out dining, can you please put your cell phones away just for a few minutes? Give me the time to take the order so we're not holding up dinner and everybody else that's dining with you. Here you go. Another thing that really bugs us servers is when you blame us for something that is completely out of our control. If your steak is undercooked, I'll be happy to get you another one. Just let me know and I'll get it out as soon as I can. But it has nothing to do with me. I'm a mom and I love kids. But please keep in mind when you're dining out with your kids that they're your responsibility and not mine. Please don't let them run around the table, throw bread at me, or tug on my apron because it makes it harder for me to do my job and it's annoying to the other customers. For me, a good tip is 20% or more. So what most people don't know is that we get paid less than $3 an hour and we still have to tip out busters, bartenders, food runners. So if you stiff me or leave me a bad tip, I'm actually paying for you to eat. Some of you think that when dining in a buffet restaurant, the standard tipping rules don't apply. In fact, some of you leave no tip at all, and that's unacceptable. I'm still offering you drinks, the same great service, and I have to clear three times as many plates. So please be kind and leave the same 15 to 20% gratuity. I bet a lot of people didn't know that, right? Right, I, I didn't either. I always do, just because, because I'm Oprah and you'd talk about me if I didn't. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> But I, I didn't know that that was like a rule, that you're supposed to do that. So Kara emailed us to say her big sister, Jenny, is so embarrassingly rude in restaurants that her family now refuses to go out to eat with her. So what does Jenny do? It's really embarrassing. Anywhere she goes, and this happens all the time, anywhere we go out to eat, she like refuses to sit at tables, and she like has to sit at a booth, and if they're really busy and she has to wait to sit at a booth, then she complains about having to wait to sit at the booth. And if her water glass gets empty and she drinks all of her water and they're not immediately there to refill her water, she gets really upset or and like won't leave a tip because they aren't doing their job. And she... Of what orders, she perceives to be their job. Yeah. And she orders iced tea a lot and she puts like sweetener in her tea. And so it gets like a certain amount of sweetener that she wants. And lots of times the waitress or waiter will come and top off the glass and she gets upset because now her sweetener to tea ratio is messed up. <laughs> that's, Everybody that's in the family is like, doesn't, is so embarrassed by it and to go out with her. And if she go, there's one fast food restaurant we go to and she orders her drink and there's like five different points that they have to do right. And if they don't do it right, she'll send they the drink. They specialize in drinks though. So I want it this way. <laughs> what is going on with you? <laughs> well, because when you hear this, doesn't that sound rude to you? Well, but I don't think I'm rude. <laughs> but 
How would you describe it? <laughs> I just I just know what I want and I want it that way. And I don't have That's what I don't a lot have of rude a, people say. Well, but I but I'm not mean. I don't like we watched the tape about uh -huh. the waitress who's upset when their food is cooked wrong and she brings it and she doesn't know the steak's undercooked and we yell at the waitress. Yeah. I don't do those things. I don't yell at people or things like that. But I also don't have a problem telling them that my steak's undercooked and it needs to be corrected. Okay, have you ever gone out, let's say, most of the times that you go out, do you find something yes, wrong? Yes, most of the time I do. And most of the time, oh, God. yes, probably what were you 99% say, most of the time. Of the time I, I find something that's not correct. And I don't, I do ask for managers often if, well, I hate to, I don't all the time ask for a manager, but I usually complain. It doesn't matter if it's fast food or a really nice restaurant. Why don't you just nice stay home? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, I'm just asking. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Why, 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 why are you going out? To, why, why don't you just stay home and well, get it the way you want it? The experience, or okay. you go out. Well, and I don't, I don't particularly like to cook, or there's just me and my boyfriend at home, so. Yeah you know, cooking for two people. Does he know? say the same thing about you? Yes. He does too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're gonna talk to you when we come back next. <laughs> you, you're gonna wanna know this. Do waiters take out revenge against rude customers? Do you ever go back to the same place? Probably. Yeah. Yes. Oh, they They're know who you are. Too. They know oh, yeah. who you are. They see me coming. <laughs> yeah, they know who you are. We'll be right back to talk about that. And a uh, fade track, fade to black. Okay, so Steve DeBlanica was a waiter for nine years and is the writer of the hugely popular blog called Waiter Rant. And it's now a book on the New York Times bestseller list. We just met Jenny, who admits that she finds something wrong in just about every meal that she goes to, every restaurant, every time she goes out. What do you want to say to her? Let me tell you something. When you ask for the manager, we're all in the back saying, who wants to play manager today? Yeah. So, Probably. you know, and sometimes I have the new guy come out and say, you're the manager, you take care of him. So you're not always speaking to the manager. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. Why? Why? Because you are, because Because we're afraid, Oprah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, really, really, why? Because? Well, because sometimes I was the manager in my restaurant. Honestly, sometimes I was so tired of dealing this With people like? I mean, they're nice people, but sometimes they run into these situations where they drive the waiters insane. Yeah. And I would want a break. And I would say, someone run interference with me with this lady or this guy. Because we just, we just reach our breaking point. Because the last thing you want is the waiter being rude. OK. Why are, are people so rude to waiters? I think it's a servant job. You know, we're bringing food to a table, and we're getting tips in return. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But when people start thinking that we can't, like we're not human, that we're slaves, that we don't have feelings. Because sometimes when people treat us that way, you know, it hurts. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that leads to waiters taking a little bit of revenge. And how do waiters take revenge? Well, I think the one everyone is scared of, and I know you're scared of. Don't spit in my food. Is, is spitting in the food. <laughs> I think very few waiters do that in actuality. I mean. What, spit in the food? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh. that's, I, have, I had a rule when I was That waiting. is rude. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's beyond rude. So my rule was if I couldn't give it to my mother, I didn't give it to a customer. OK. Um, but Do you know, there was a movie I did a long time ago. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the movie Color, Color Purple. Yes. And there's a line in there when uh, Seeley is talking to Mr. And because he wanted to do something, something. And she said, well, next time this visitor comes to the house and the person was very rude, mm -hmm. she says, next time I put a little Suge Avery's pee in it. <laughs> That's worse than spitting. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Yes, that's rudeness beyond the pale. <laughs> I never even thought about that. <laughs> a little shit baby pee in it. Were you ever a waiter? No, I've never oh, been a waiter. No, I've never been a waiter. Now, one of the things you say, though, it's rude to ask for a different table, is it? On a busy night, the hostess has set up the seating plan in a way that it's like the logistics for the Normandy invasion. If you change one table, everything gets thrown off. See, that's what I didn't understand. Yeah. There is a strategy to a oh, restaurant. Yeah. Well, Did you all know that? Yeah. I didn't know that. Too. Two people take less time to eat than four people. Six people take more time to eat than four people. So we plan according to those times. And if someone, and the worst thing is when someone comes in on a busy night with no reservation, and they say, I want the best seat in the house. And if we give it to them, we've thrown everything out of whack. What if that person's Brad Pitt and Angelina? 
You know what? <laughs> Alec Baldwin ate at my restaurant one time. He yeah. came in unannounced, yeah. right? The only table I had was literally by the printer and the two bathrooms. Uh huh. This is Alec Baldwin. Uh huh. And he walked out and said, you know, Mr. Baldwin, this is the only table I had. And he said, no problem. And That's he sat good. down and he took it. So even if it's Alec Baldwin, but if I don't got the table, okay. if Brad Pitt and Angelina came in and it was the only table I had, that would be where I OK, was. all right. Tell us why tipping less than 15% is really rude. In New York State, we only get paid $4.80 an hour. And in some states, they only get $2.15 an hour. So that's not a lot of money. And waiters depend on tips for about 90% of the bulk of their income. Well, shouldn't we change that? Shouldn't we change that? Because I don't think most people think right. that. I, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, wouldn't that be nice that you change that? Because, because if you don't tip, then that person doesn't get paid. Literally, exactly like what right. the woman said on the tape earlier, if you don't tip, you tip me less than 15%, then I'm basically paying for you to eat because the waiter has to tip the busboy. That's right. And who else? Uh, sometimes you have to tip the, the food runner or the hostess or the bartender. We may keep only 80 to 70 cents of every dollar we get, sometimes less. It depends on the restaurant. Wow. So next, how to handle extreme rudeness at work. Millions of you are dealing with that. But before we do that, I was asking, um, uh, Dr. Forney, the same question. The difference between being rude and mean. Yes, it's a difference between uh, focused rudeness and unfocused rudeness. There are people that are equally opportunity offenders when it comes to rudeness. They are rude to everybody without even realizing it. Yeah. That's the unfocused rudeness. And then there are people who are mean, who uh, have malice, uh, who will uh, may, uh, ask you a question to embarrass you in, the front, in front of your oh, boss. Yes. And so that's the difference between rudeness and mean. The, the rude person is the person who bumps you and, and without saying, I'm sorry, uh, or that uh, uh, will not give you a seat on a bus seeing that, that you are an elderly gentleman. But then there is the mean person, the, the person with, with focused rudeness that targets you uh, in a mean way and, and wants something for you because of envy, for instance, because of insecurity. One but what about people who talk down, like people who say things like, well, you know, a person's doing the best they can, and they go, well, well how hard is it? Or say well, snipe little things like they that. They are very often insecure people yeah. who shift the burden of their insecurity upon others in the form of hostility. Yeah. That is a, a major mechanism, psychological mechanism. We shift our insecurity for whatever reason. We are insecure at work. We have a new boss. We are being downsized, uh -huh. and so on and so forth. We don't think that we have all the skills that we need. We shift that insecurity upon others in the form of rudeness, in the form of hostility. And okay. so we, we have to be aware of, of this uh, cause of rudeness. Back in a moment. All right, uh, this, this, is, this is not just to pick on Jenny, but really to help us all in the restaurant, because I've made this mistake too. Have you been in the restaurant many times and you're like, where is the check? Where is the check? Where is the check? Well, it is impolite for a server to come up to you and just drop the check on the table. What you should do is you should ask for the check. Now, trust me, if it's a busy night and I got to get you out of there, I will drop the check on your table. That means get out of here. And trust me, when you see that, it means it's time for you to go. But um, if you're having a wonderful evening, the last thing I want to do is go, bang, here's the check. So you should ask for it. The other thing you should do. They're wait the waiters are waiting on us to ask for the check. I didn't know that. I was always waiting on yeah, the check. Just ask for the check. OK. And when you get the check, the other thing is the waiters are not psychic. We don't know if there's money in that envelope or not. So just leave the money or the credit card sticking out so we can see it. So we're not hovering over the table going, is it ready? Is it ready? Because you don't want us hovering over your table. And then we'll just take it away and bring it back. And then try and leave within a decent amount of time after paying the bill. Because on a busy night, getting another table means the waiter makes more money, the restaurant makes more money, everyone there makes more money. We'll be right back. OK, so I know we put a lot of spotlight on Jenny. Are you feeling bad? No. OK. <laughs> I was going to give you a hug, so you don't need one, right? Oh, well, I can, I'll take a okay, hug okay. from Oprah. <laughs> Who's going to say no? I'll take, I'll take a hug. I didn't want you feeling bad. <laughs> There's a lot of spotlight on you. But 
But, 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 if, if she were coming to your restaurant, you all would have a little database on her, wouldn't you? You would. And the database would say what? Uh, difficult customer. Difficult customer. And then how does everybody then handle her? When I worked in the restaurant, we had waiters who could handle certain kinds of people. So there were waiters you would love and we would take very good care of you. But I would, I would be like, ah, I can't handle you. Okay, waiter rant. You feel good now? You got it all out? I did. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Dr. Forney, if we could all just take one lesson away from today about being more civil, what, what would you want that to be? Social skills strengthen social bonds. And we need social bonds to survive and to thrive. In civility and civility, good manners are a quality of life issue. They are not trivial because they are about how we treat one another in everyday life and what's more important than that. What's more important than that? Thank you, audience. Thank you for taking our test, and I uh, hope this makes you think about it differently. Dr. Forney's book is called Choosing Civility, the 25 Rules of Considerate Conduct. Bye. Be more gracious to everybody. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the OWN channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.